Okay, lads, we're, this, is, this will be a much shorter presentation, all right? It's just we're getting towards where we want to be, basically, right? How the fundamental movement skills are going to impact the game, okay? Or how are they going to be useful when it comes to the game, right? So what we're going to look at is fundamental sports skills, right? Now, we've loads of, loads of letters are going to be thrown out all over the place, right? But look, they're put into these categories because they're just easy to remember. All right, so what we have first, ABCs, agility, balance, coordination, right? No, from earlier on we've already seen what balance is, right? So we can just leave that out for the time being. But we have, if we're going on to do some agility work, <clears throat> if the balance isn't there, the agility work that we do basically is going to be null and void, right? So if it, just as an idea, if you decide with an under 10 group, right, as part of the warm-up, we're going to do an agility-based warm-up. You can always prep that two or three minutes of basic static ba balance work. Okay? It'll give you an idea to say, right, look, some lads are struggling here with the static balances. We might just need to pair back the agility work tonight, keep it at a very basic level, but still introduce it. Okay? And that's very important. With all of this stuff, if lads are struggling at the very basics, it doesn't mean that you disregard the, the more complex stuff. More often than not, young lads could sidestep you, but they couldn't stand in front of you for 10 seconds balancing. Now, even though balance is a prerequisite of agility and footwork, it comes natural for them to be able to dodge and run away from you, rather than stand on one leg in front of you. Okay, so it sounds a bit counterproductive, but it can work. Okay? Coordination is going to be the key to all of this, right? And you'll often hear it, oh, Jesus, he's a very rangy young fella, his coordination is poor. Or look, you throw the ball to him, his hands are all over the place, coordination is poor, okay? And there's loads of different things that come into coordination. Obviously, we have hand-eye coordination, which is a huge factor, especially in hurling, because, like I said, the fine motor skills, if your perception of where the ball is or where you need to put your hand isn't right, it's going to play a huge impact on you gaining possession of the ball. Okay, so coordination, the combination of body movements that result in intended actions. Right? The rest of it is just giving a bit more information on what coordination, but essentially that's what it is. The combination of body movements that result in intended actions. Okay, so if the ball is thrown to me or hand passed to me, a slitter, and I want to catch it, I have to coordinate a lot of things. I might need to coordinate a step closer to where the ball is going to be. I need to get the, the hand up, okay? The grasp has to come into play. So there's a lot of actions coming into play for one thing, catch the ball, right? And if the coordination is poor, hand-eye coordination, coordination of stepping and moving your hand at the same time, it's always going to be difficult for young lads. Okay, we touched on agility earlier when it came to dodging. Right? So obviously dodging is a form of agility. agility. Agility basically is the ability to accelerate and decelerate at pace while changing direction. Right? You get young lads, they'll be able to sprint in a straight line, they have to turn right, they have to stop, they have to turn, and then they'll sprint in a straight line again. Right? So we want to get them into the habit of being able to change direction at pace. The next couple of letters we have, RTJs. Running, throwing, jumping. Okay, we've seen running and jumping already, so we're concentrating on throwing. No, throwing doesn't take place in Gaelic games. Does it? It's supposed to. Hmm? It's not supposed to. <coughs> but what about when we uh, strike the slitter? What do we have to do with the slitter? Let's throw it. Okay. In preparation with young lads for a hand pass, whether it's in football or hurling, if they can't throw the ball underarm, they'll never get the action of bringing the other hand into play to be able to hand pass it. Okay, they'll never get the hand pass if they can't throw it underarm. Okay, so even though certain skills you may not think come into play in your sport, more often than not, they're prep skills for what we want to achieve on the, on the pitch. Okay, and it's very important with young lads that if they can't hand pass, don't be too concerned about it. There could be underlying issues that throwing the ball from an, in an underarm position 
is, is a struggle for them. Okay, so we may need, may need to pair it back to that. Okay, no, even though overhanded throws and belting the ball at each other, we'd say from a dodgeball point of view, doesn't come into play at all in Gaelic games, there's no reason why you couldn't throw it into a warm up as a fun warm up. Okay? And dodgeball is a great one, obviously not with slitter's legs, right? Okay, so look, throwing a ball is propelling a ball away from the body and is a target skill. Right? No. You're very fortunate outside that you have the ball, Ali, and that there's targets on the wall. Even from a young age, I would always give a target when you're throwing the ball. Okay? It could be a huge target. Throw it into my hands. Make your hands as wide as you can so that they feel like they've achieved something instead of throwing it into my hands. Right? Okay, so hula hoops are great things for that as well. Now, obviously, in an ideal world, we'd have loads and loads of equipment where you could have young lads holding hula hoops and throw the ball through it. But look, we have stuff on the wall outside. It might be just hit a colour, right? There's a big huge line of a colour, surely you'll be able to hit that at some stage, right? So, it has to be always taken into consideration that when you're throwing, obviously it's propelling a ball away from you, but it is a target skill, okay? So, same thing, we have our discovering phase, we have our developing phase, and we have our consolidating phase. Okay? More often than not, from, throwing, from a throwing point of view, when lads are discovering, they have no control over the arm that's throwing the ball, right? From the point of view of hitting a target, but also their perception of how hard they should throw the ball, right? So if I wanted to throw the ball to, to David, like, like young fella, he doesn't care how it gets to him, I said it the last day, he could fire it at him as hard as he can, and he'd just think, it got there. He doesn't care what ends, what ends up happening, okay, whether I flattened him on the floor with a ball into the face, whether it made it to him, whether he gained possession, all they care about is that it got there, right? So it's starting to develop then the control in the arm for different lengths of throws, the target that you're looking at, okay, but also if you're passing, and we'll see that in a minute, throwing becoming a pass, how that impacts on where the ball ends up. Okay, so the second one is important for us because when it comes to striking, the arms aren't just involved in striking. Same in throwing, the arm just isn't involved in throwing. Okay, if we want to bring in something whereby if I want to pass the ball to someone but protect it at the same time, I'm going to have to get into the habit of twisting my body as well. Okay, so using my body as a shield but using my trunk and my shoulders to be able to shield myself as well. Okay, and consolidating. Okay, obviously, if he lined up a load of lads as well outside the ball alley and said, look, we're just going to throw the ball off the wall, underarm, same thing, you'll have some lads will fire it up and throw it out over the wall. <coughs> so I've no, no slitter left. Okay, where you'll have some lads we will be able to stand, they'll have the foot position right, they'll have the swing and they'll have the extension at the end, okay, there'll be, huge there'll be a huge variation in levels that you'll have. Okay, CPKS, right, that's a bit of a mouthful right, when it comes to, when you compare it to ABCs and RTJs, but catching, passing, kicking, striking, right, now obviously passing, throwing is going to have a, an impact on that, how we pass in, in, our, in our games, hand pass, again, they're all predicated on the fact that they're able to throw the ball underarm. <coughs> okay, so catching or receiving, body controls the ball or an object, relying on the ability of the eyes to track the ball. So same again, hand-eye coordination is going to come into play. Okay, discovering phase, catching, and you'll find that an awful lot the very first one with young kids. No matter how soft you try and throw the ball, they won't want to get hurt. Okay, so they'll try and catch it like this, or they'll put their hands out because if they think it won't hurt if they hit their hands, but if it hits the body in any way, shape, or form, it'll like be being shot, right? So it's just a matter of informing them that to gain possession of the ball or of the slitter, you're going to have to use your body, not just your hands.
Yeah, developing phase. <coughs> Second one. Has anyone had any experience of lads trying to catch the ball like that when it comes down? Trying to pretend they're a crocodile to catch it, right? They're understanding why they can't catch it because they have to, obviously the strong hand goes underneath. And they think, sure, if it hits off that and I'm able to slap it, surely it'll stay where it should stay, right? They can't understand why bang and they're hitting it away or they're missing their hand and they're just slapping it straight onto the ground, okay? Or they miss their hands completely and they bang it up into the air, okay? And obviously when we get to the consolidating phase then, ideal situation where body position is right, okay? They're able to absorb the force of the ball, right? Balance again comes into play here, right? A dynamic balance. If they're standing still and a football is coming down and instead of them just standing still, that when the ball comes, they're able to absorb it and come back up, right? So they're getting the balance in the legs, but it's dynamic because there's a little bit of movement in there. Right, now, with kicking, there's a lot that comes into play. Kicking, foot dribbling, <coughs> trapping the ball, okay? Well, punting and kicking are probably the same, right? So, basically, it's any striking with the foot is going to come into play here, right? So, from our game, we, more often than not, we do not want to see anyone putting the ball on the ground and dribbling it up soccer side in the game of football, right? It kills me when I see it, right? Because the next thing they'll do is they'll be diving, right? So, but there are stages in the game where if a defender is on you, even from a young age, if there's a defender there in small-sided games, they're going to have to just dribble the ball out of, <coughs> out of harm's way and maybe then they can go down and get to 200 ball, right? So, dribbling has to be practiced, basically. Now, it, again, it can be practiced from the point of view of a very simple warm-up drill. It doesn't have to be practiced as a skill of the game, but it can be practiced as a warm-up drill, even if it was what's called ball familiarity, okay? Getting young lads used to manipulating a ball, right? They can just say, right, we're going to dribble this time. Next time, we're going to run or go around basketball style, bouncing the ball. They're getting familiar to using the ball with their hands, with their feet, okay? And they become more comfortable in possession of the ball then. Okay, so with all of this, obviously with trapping, we would be hoping that instead of trapping, the ball is going to be caught. Okay, they're, when they're talking about trapping is if the ball is in flight and it's coming to you, again, soccer style, that you can control the ball or trap the ball. All right? it comes into play obviously a small bit if the ball is rolling towards you, but again, if it, if it, even from a young age, if we can get them to... First option, bend the back to get the ball into the hand. It'll be more, more beneficial going down the line. Okay, and when it comes to kicking, I think if we think about any young lads kicking a ball, I think everyone probably has this, would have the same... I'm going to make it a presumption that everyone would have the same kind of scenario where strong leg, so what they'll do is throw the ball up and in the hope that they can get the timing right to kick it, rather than dropping the ball, okay? So their first option is to throw it up, okay? Or else they're dropping it with the wrong hand, all right? So <coughs> left hand, if they're going to kick with their right leg, they might be dropping with their left hand, so the body's twisted, and straight away they're kicking and they're missing everything, okay? So when it comes to kicking, the same thing, you're going to have huge variation more often than not, lads can kick it in some way, shape or form with no problem when the ball is on the floor. Right? But we're bringing a huge element of coordination into play when we want them to kick it out of the hands. Right? And it's getting them out of the habit of firing it up in the hope that then that when they swing the leg it'll make connection with the ball. Okay, in the consolidating phase, obviously again, we're coming into where they should be ideally. Okay, where the toe tracks where the ball goes in a straight line, they have the follow through. Okay, they may even take a, a slight step out of it because the upper body is going where they want it to go. Okay, very hugely applicable to what's going to be 
going on with the majority of leads down here. Okay, striking. Striking with an implement more than so than no. A racket, a stick or a bat. You can see there that I uh, we'll say that yours is a stick, right? Or a bat. Some fellas use it as well. Some and actually you get some lads as well, especially at under six think it's a sword, right? So you have to be careful that. Use some lads in Edel, they will think it's a sword. <laughs> Right. So, striking with an implement, same again, trapping and blocking is going to come into play. I'm, like, I am not a hurling coach. I will say that straight out. When I was down with the lads, I made it quite clear to them that I am not a hurling coach. I will not go out and attempt to improve the hurling skills. Okay? Ye as coaches, predominantly that's your job, to improve the hurling skills. Okay? So, obviously, if you're doing a drill on a block, there are certain elements of fundamental <coughs> movements that will come into play there as well. Right? But there's no reason why you can't implement the skill from in a, a very skill-based drill with a little bit of emphasis also on the fundamental movements or the fundamental sport skills. Okay, so striking, again from working with young lads in schools and in primary schools, the striking, feet are square, and then try and swing the hurley, right? Rather than getting themselves into position to be able to have a, a nice smooth motion, right? No trunk rotation basically means this is your trunk, right? They try and do everything with the arms, right? Rather than seeing the coordination of body movements so that the shoulders, the arms, the trunk, everything has to come into play. Okay, so as they start to develop, the first thing that will come is the little bit of coordination between body parts. They'll so soon realise, right, I want to be able to strike the ball further than Johnny. How am I going to do that? First thing they'll do is they'll look at Johnny. Jesus, Johnny's bending his knees a small bit there when he strikes the ball. And no matter how much you say to them, if they see their buddy doing it, then they're going to do it. And consolidating phase, okay. Go back once, play dark on if I mind. Sorry. You'd have asked for me. Right. Okay, now I know that there's a lot of information up on these slides, okay, but like I said, they're going to be made available so that you can print them off, read them in your own time. But when it comes to the striking phase, because hurling is your game, all of this stuff you would do as coaches anyway. Okay? Maybe not using the same terminology, right? Definitely wouldn't use a lot of this terminology with kids anyway. That's it, very basic, right? I don't want to go into any more detail with regards to fundamental sports skills, right? There's obviously hu a huge amount of more skills in your game, but all of them are built upon the fundamental movements that we've seen and these very basic fundamental sports skills, okay? Now, when we go outside, I have a load of, no, there's not that much stuff set up outside there, but there's huge variation in what we're going to do outside. Now, the way I want to work it is, we're going to do a, a game or a drill, and then I want you to maybe give me a bit of feedback on how it would impact you. Have you used that type of drill before? I would guarantee that there's some stuff out there that you use the whole time, right? What other variations could you see that you could put on it for the, the, the kids that you have in front of you, knowing your kids, okay? So... If we can, when we go outside, lads, whether it's interaction amongst yourselves as it's going on, or interaction with me, stopping me up, saying, right, what would you do if, or my lads are a good bit past this now, how can I make this more challenging to them? Right, so, as much interaction as we can outside, lads, it's for your benefit. It's always, this is always the hardest part, inside here. Now, I've been in enough seminars, I've been in enough courses, and I spent enough time in college, we're all, more often than not, when you're in here getting the information, <coughs> you know, 
both head and arse are going numb, right? So, when we go outside, when it's in a more practical sense, hopefully we get a, a, a better feel of what we're talking about when it comes to all this stuff. Okay? So, 